Okay, I'm about done with this guy, uh, Drake L7. I have it on 110 uh, right now. Um, dual 3500Z amplifier, the um, updated version of the uh, infamous Drake L4B. And the L4B is um, considered by many the um, heaviest duty you know desktop 35 dual 3500z amp ever made and the uh, L7 is close not quite a L4B it doesn't have the um, forced air, air cooling um, for the fan but the L4B uses the exact same power supply um, separate power supply as the, uh, the L7 uses the exact same power supply that the Drake L4B does and L7 is a little bit smaller. Uh, they cramped, you know, more in it. The L7 has 160 meters, whereas the uh, L4B had um, only um, up to 80 meters. And also, uh, when the L7 came out, the FCC had clamped down on amplifier makers, and they made sure that you couldn't use them on 10 meters and hence 11 meters. And there are a few things you got to do if you want to run uh, L7 on um, 10 meters. Um, they have the band switch locked out. They just got a mechanical stop. So you can't um, physically um, turn the band switch to 10 meters when it's factory. And you can take that stop out. Um, and then they got a filter on the input side, but I already showed that one, a long video on that and the um, other stuff you need to do to convert this to um, 10 meters. And I've said this many times that pretty much any amp that will work on 10 meters will work on 11 meters, except for an amp that has that uh, 11 meter filter. Um, in them and the L7's one Heathkit SB221 is another but I'm sure there are more but you know um, it's not something I've done any research on it so this is the L7 it's lit up um, only got about 2400 on the power supply um, on 110 and isn't it pretty that's the lights on the um, L7 and then the uh, different uh, meter, the uh, multimeter. Um, so right now it's on volts and you can hit uh, grid current, which is a nice thing to look at if you you know know how to read it. And built-in watt meter, 3,000 watts uh, watt meter on it, 300 uh, watt reflected. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's 300 watt four on the watt meter and then another one for 300 watt reflected on the watt meter and then a uh, standby switch um, a AGC pot here variable and then um, SSB CW and then your main power on and off switch and I'm using a power supply head on that um, Raytrack 2000 clone because I got these amps with no power supply and the Race Track 2000, which I think came out before the uh, Drake L4B, so does that mean Drake copied the Ray Track? But anyway, um, almost the same pinout, same kind of plug. Um, so I just uh, hooked it up to this um, Ray Track 2000 power supply I had, and away it went. Isn't it kind of pretty? That light or no that meter is discolored some I don't like that um, but anyway hey it is what it is I'm pretty happy I got them um, got them for a decent price and um, this one had that weird um, capacitor I'm live so I'm just zooming in believe me I'm not close to this amplifier because I got I don't want to get hit by them 2500 volts but if you see that doorknob right there uh, to the left of the plate choke um, it had a thin um, uh, like two inch square um, or rectangular capacitor there weird capacitor it was similar to that 
green thing there next to the um, tank coil that's another capacitor that is switched in on hundred and sixty meters that green white thing there took me a while to figure out what that was and then um, it had another one over here on the plate choke but the one over here was blown so um, it's recommended on the net that that's a weak point of this amplifier that um, original flat um, 47 picofarad capacitor so I put a 50 picofarad doorknob in there obviously and um, other than that it wasn't much wrong with this amplifier um, you know it might have been a wire here or something there um, backlit light bulbs you know pretty neat amplifier that's your metering circuit and all that a lot of wires to this thing right um, filament transformer there um, that's the other side of that weird 160 meter capacitor and all that coils you know because the more you go up the band you know 80 meters 160 you need more and more coil and that's why you see a lot of coils in this amplifier um, I've went through that weird thing too that they tap that uh, tank coil a couple turns into the coil is where they got the tune uh, capacitor tapped at that screw right there it's actually two but that's where the um, tank coil is tapped into the um, tune capacitor is and then from there it's three turns from there about three turns and that's where your um, 10 meter tap is and then all the rest of that stuff is for the other bands you know uh, that's probably 15 meter that's probably 20 meter and then that um, coil there that cylindrical one is probably you know 40 80 and 160 meters and then they didn't have enough capacitance to um, you know just use the standard tune and load and that's why that capacitor is switched in and way underneath this thing you can't see it and I'm not gonna dig in because again this thing is live that um, they switch in a few more capacitors um, on the load too um, so it can be tuned up for the other bands um, again this one has a fan no forced air uh, cooling this one does have a two-speed fan where it has that resistor in line on the fan so the fan is running slow right now and then when that uh, there is a thermostat there um, gets hot enough it'll kick in and when that kicks in um, it's the fan is going to have full power or high speed so when it gets hot you know the fan goes faster to its high speed and as long as it's not too hot that fan is running you know nice and slow as it is now you can barely hear it one more thing before I key this thing down is there was a, originally a crowbar circuit over here whereas if it didn't have the cover off or yeah when you got the cover off that crowbar circuit would short the high voltage in that corner there is where the high voltage comes in at and um, that circuit was spring loaded you take the cover off the um, rod pops up and then the bottom of that rod it grounds out the um, high voltage there's also you can't see it because it's underneath and I'm not moving this amplifier to get underneath it would it lie but there um, somewhere around where that cord is there was an um, a interlock switch where that cover wraps around and goes a little bit underneath where you bolt it down at and where it wraps underneath there was an interlock switch too whereas you take that cover off it disconnects power to this and since I got power and you you know see is nothing shorted um, I bypassed the interlock and removed the crowbar so 
don't do this at home but you know uh, since I'm doing videos and trying to show this thing live and inside and all that is is why they do that normally I don't do it either I put covers on and and keep that safety stuff in there I may even put it back um, after this video so anyway I guess that's enough talking um, on 110 and not putting a, a ton of volts in this thing uh, so anyway I'm gonna put it back to the uh, voltmeter driving it with the Mako 75 a pair of um, EMAC 3500 ZG's EMAC's with the graphite plates those are kind of hard to find too so um, first of all we we'll key down the uh, Mako 75 on this meter here audio 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 so I'm actually only dead keen about two watts audio might be talking to 80 90 audio and that's what I'm gonna put into this thing so we are gonna um, key her down and let her fly even this keying her down you can see the plate volts drop a little bit because um, I think I want a little bit more power supply to really uh, get this thing going and we may uh, change the transformer or do something else with that. But anyway, enough talking. We're on the dummy load on the 2000 watt scale. I believe I'm on average of that meter uh, calibrated to a bird. No false watts. So at two watts in, we did keen about 25. We must be on peak. Audio, audio. Yeah, we are on peak the way the meter's going. Audio, audio. Audio. Shh. Audio. 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 About uh, 1600 peak watts. We'll put it on average. Of course, it's going to do a lot less, less on average. Audio, 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 about 800. Shh, shish into about 1100 on average. Audio, audio, that's not too bad. About 8 to 1 as far as what's going in there. We can back up here. You know, on the left, the watt meter is uh, what's going in, and then on the right, the 200 watt scale. And on the right, the 2000 watt scale. So almost 10 to 1, not quite. Audio, audio, audio. My vote is dropping to around um, 2,000, which is kind of light on these 3,500Zs. I'm pretty happy with it. Audio, audio. No grunts, no uh, nothing. You know, the um, tubes aren't really getting hot because I'm not pushing it that hard and the uh, high fan hasn't kicked in. Audio, audio. I'm gonna unkey it and reach over and put it on peak. And even reaching over, it's not very hot, you know, because it's not being pushed that much. And there we go. Audio, 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 audio. And that's on 110 too. On 220, the voltage would hold up a little bit better, but still, that power supply is not really. Um, pushing this amplifier very hard so that's gonna be it for this uh, Drake L7 I like it uh, it's pretty right <laughs> okay that's it for this one bye